All right, so some people have asked about the river, how to make a river mesh to complement the game's river system. Uh, what I'll do is I'll make a mesh plane and I will scale one of the directions lengthwise uh, two so that it is a two by one ratio because the texture that I made for it, I've already made a material for it, which I'm going to give you the material so you have it too and you won't have to make the texture. Uh, I'm just redoing this in case you want to know how to do it. Small grid art. Flood. Flood 2 DDS. Hold down Z and say material preview. <coughs> <coughs> or you could have went up to here and press that. So that puts the texture on there in a nice 2 to 1 ratio. Now, I'll usually import in one of the game's cars or a part of the car just to kind of get an idea of the scale that I'm looking at. So I know how much I want to scale this, the size I want the river to be. So I'll probably go with that. Now I'm done with the truck. Now this has got no subdivisions at all. So, I'll, so if you look at the wireframe, it's just, there's nothing. So I'll do is select it, go to edit mode, edge, subdivide, and right here, I'll crank this up to 100. Uh, if you have lower spec systems, then you probably want to do maybe 25 or 50. But the more, the smoother. Also, back to object mode, I'll tell the object to be, with it selected there, to be shaded smooth. Now, the next part's the fun part. Well, for me, I think it's pretty fun. Um, shaping your, don't delete your water. I was trying to delete the camera. Shaping your river. Now, <clears throat> probably the easiest thing to imagine is Imagine your arm, like if you stuck your arm out underneath this thing long, lengthwise. Alright, imagine, let's go into edit mode. Let's look at just the front view, not the length view, not the long view, but the view that shows the shorter side. Let's turn on this proportional editing and with the selector box selected, let's select these middle boxes here and hit this or letter G on your keyboard to move. But with proportional editing, what that's going to do, if you hit page up, page down, it'll kind of make a, well, 3D Studio calls it a soft knee, but it basically is an influence, an influence for the part up uh, for the surrounding vertices so instead of having it just move you know like this it affects this by hitting page up page down now, you won't get this circle unless you are actually either rotating moving or scaling so I know that could be confusing because you don't see it until you start to move something I forgot to turn on x-ray x-ray will Basically, when you select this, it'll also select all the way to the back. Whereas, if you just have this off and you select with non x ray, then all you're selecting is just the front vertices. So, that's why that's turned on. So, with that turned on, you can select all those. So, I'm going to do this like this. Proportional editing, move up. What I basically am doing is I want the river to be kind of like a towel. Like if you were to stick your arm under a towel and let it drape over your arm, that's kind of the shape that I'm trying to get uh, because you don't want your edges to be higher than the water level or you're going to see that it's just a two-dimensional flat you know mesh this kind of conceals that a little and then looking at a top view I'll do the same thing with the ends I'll select these like this holding shift down to multiple select G 
z actually do a little something like something like uh, um, maybe something around there a little more down z This will make it easier if you want to make multiple, like going back to object mode, if you wanted to make multiple segments, you know, they'll basically go into one another. Whereas if you have them both kind of like flat, you know, you can, it's harder to get them perfectly together without having a little space in between. And when they're flat, and the technique that I'm going to use to animate this to be water simulated cloth like looking is they need to be together and no space in between I don't know really how to explain this is going to make a lot of ripples and if you got two separate pieces you're going to have a lot of ripples some are going to be higher than the other and then you're going to be seeing underneath uh, the mesh so in sculpt mode, if we pick this and go to cloth and go to brush and change the simulation limit a lot, increase it a lot, increase the strength here, you can hold F down to get a bigger brush. As you move this, it'll start to crinkle and deform the surface like cloth which also looks like a river a river waves now you can overdo this certainly you know you can really mess it up but the good thing about sculpt tool and it's, it's probably easier if you're looking at a shaded view to see what you're doing uh, even though I joined them they're not actually joined for some reason because I was only going to show you with one piece, piece of cloth I don't know I'm just saying you could use two pieces tools in here too. Hold on a second. You know, water's got a mind of its own. And there's no wrong way to make a river. Like, there's no certain way that, you know, it's whatever looks right to you. Whatever looks good to you. Once it starts to animate, it'll look pretty cool. But there's a lot of little different things you know maybe it's like a little what they call a little world little eddy whirlpool eddies you know and a good thing about texture scroll is it will follow what you've basically uh, done like it'll follow this into a circle because it's all going to be flowing one direction and since the texture is already applied basically it's just going to follow whatever you do to the to the mesh like 
there's a, there's a lot of different tools. They do a lot of different things. Uh, the best way to figure them out is to experiment. Some may work better than others for certain things. Just depending on what it is that you're trying to do. Usually I just use the cloth and that's enough for me. I don't usually need to do anything else. Uh, but you know, you could find things. You could find other ways to make even cooler stuff if you experiment. So if you think you have like messed up, you done too much or you don't like how it turned out, you can always pick smooth and you can smooth an area and start over basically. Now if you didn't like the way something was turning out, there's also a flatten. We'll try to flatten it back to its original. like a little waterfall kind of deal. Let's see if I can snake hook this on around. Like water that is kind of breaking over uh, some uh, kind of going over some rocks. This also works great, really great for lava. But you don't want to stretch it too much. If you stretch it too much, then it's going to look like it's stretched too much. Throw a couple rocks in there. And probably look all right. So basically, that's it. And you know, another thing you can do to help you is to add a mesh plane and scale it up, and just pretend this is the ground plane, the ground mesh. Because what you don't want is you don't want to have to later go back into it. Uh, you don't want to have to later go back and fix things like this. You have your river, but then you got a piece that's sticking up like that. That's why I fold the ends down on the sides and in the front, just to eliminate having to worry about that kind of stuff. Now, you can always hide stuff with a rock or something if you know, but I pretty much try to avoid having to do things so I don't have to do them. All right, I'll just call this. Blood. Um, flood underscore A five hundred. I'll duplicate it. This one I'll call. 50. I'll hide the 500. I'll do a decimate because that's 20,000 faces. That's pretty high. I'll do a decimate and I'll reduce it significantly so that when you're farther away it will uh, go to a very lower polygon and help your performance.
I could honestly probably reduce the 500 one too a bit. It doesn't have to have that many damn faces. So that's where when you make this, when you do your initial subdivisions, uh, you don't have to put 100, you could put 50 because uh, the more you subdivisions, the more pause. Now, this is probably fine, 9,000. You don't want to reduce it too much. Uh, let's see. Okay. Now we've got to add two empty plane axes. These are kind of like a folder hierarchy kind of thing. That's how the game recognizes. I, I don't know. That's just how it's got to be. If you're going to include a collision mesh. Holding shift, you can move those into there. When you left click and drag, left click, drag, drop, hold, shift. Uh, now the lower polygon version, I'll make a collision mesh. Actually, yeah, 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 I'll do it. Actually, you know what, I can do it this way. I'll make another plane. And this one, I won't subdivide nearly as much in edit mode. Let's do like 20. Now back to object mode. Uh, this one I will say shrink wrap to this one. So that'll be the collision mesh. Which, yes, I realize that it's not extending over the edge. So I'm just scaling it. When you scale with a modifier in object mode, for example, like hitting S to scale and scaling, you know, a direction, you can a lot of times get it to give you the coverage that you want. See, this will actually be the collision mesh. It's far less detailed than the other mesh as you can see so it ain't got to be perfect you just kind of want something there all right so we'll apply the modifier and we'll name this c-o-l-m-e-s-h dash one and we'll hold shift left click drag and drop that and start and that will basically give you a collision mesh so when you use this method you don't tell it visible mesh final in the inspector window because it'll use this instead. Now we just need to set the origin get both of these because uh, when you rotate in the game you really want them to kind of be the center or centered. So I'll, I'll move this to here and move in the top view. Are we over the center? Yeah, that's close enough I guess. Now you can always tell where an object's origin is by these little dots. So that dots up there, and this one's dots over there. That's basically the axis that it'll rotate on. See so that dot there? But we're going to make those the 3D cursor axis. So we'll say object, set origin, 3D cursor. And I always just apply all transforms just to make sure. And I'll export it into the game folder as a DAE. I beam ng. Let's see. Levels are uh, small grid, art, flood. This will be flood four. Now, in the game, that texture, did I already go over that? I don't remember. Did I say anything about the texture yet? I named the texture in here flood two. So in my materials file, I have uh, it already filled out for you. So you don't have to make the material. Let's go into the game and load that up. 
just save you some time and effort. You can examine the texture to see how it animates and stuff. Uh, and then it'd be easier for you to kind of reverse engineer it to make it how you want to make it. It's already got the animation value set. So when I load it up, it'll be good to go. Right inside a rock, ain't that lovely? Under our editor, asset browser, flood, flood four. And this is the little thing that we just made. That's kind of <laughs> wacky looking. See the little little eddies swirling there? Now it would look better if there was more tessellation, more subdivisions. You're not going to get that with the game's river. No way, Jose. That's uh, from a, a mesh. So you can have these kind of all join into your other rivers and stuff. Now since this actually is using a collision mesh, you would uh, have to rebuild the collisions with control F7 once you get it set where you want it. This would be a great place for like one of these rocks. I recorded this video two days ago or yesterday I don't remember what day I made a how to make these and I damn had my auto HDR on and it basically washed out all the contrast it looked terrible I mean it blew out the contrast really bad so I made sure to turn it off this time Got something kind of wonky going on there. Wacky, wonky, crazy looking, whatever. Uh, this ain't the right, maybe good, a good rock for this. I'll just leave it. I'll just hide it with a particle. I'll just hide it with part. So I'll place my particle and change it to like water fall spray. Why didn't this change? Something's going on. What is going on? Not the change in the damn particle. Well, I'll be damned. I don't know what's going on. I didn't have this problem before. So apparently now, once you place a particle, you can't just change it. Oh, now it's working. Well, damn, I don't know. This game never ceases to amaze me and some of the wonky stuff it does. Man, I love the game, don't get me wrong, but man, some of the things that the editor <laughs> really kind of crazy. And you know what? You can't see this for shit. Let's change the time of day. Uh, 
Let's see, uh, start time points 0.78. There we go. Now we can see the particles a little better. That's better. Then you know you would put like a particle anytime you got it, like where it's going to run into something. You know, if you want to make some splash, I'm going to edit that a little bit though. I want to make that a little more exciting. Oops, forgot to change to the waterfall spray. But basically, if you lower this number, and I realize I have not done the follow-up to the particles video, which will include this stuff here. Uh, and I'm a little behind. The default was 50. I just changed the ejection period to be lower. That way we get more particles. And yes, I tried to do this with car crash effects, and I did not achieve anything. I just modified them. It didn't create more particles as I anticipated. For some reason, the car crash physics and those particles related, I've not been able to figure out how to increase the amount that's produced. Even if you set the particle to make 10 billion pieces of plastic, the game's only allowing it to release a set number for whatever reason. I would suspect it has to do with performance to optimize performance rather than uh, it, if anything see like you got a water coming under like this you're gonna have some down you're gonna have some splashes that's for sure You don't want them coming up out of the road like that, that's for sure. That don't quite look right. Damn, it's hard to tell where the damn thing's at, ain't it? There we go. Grabbing an arrow, holding shift down, and dragging. Let's see, these are too high.
I mean, it may be like there may not actually be that many particles. I don't have the luxury of living in a place that gets flooded. Uh, so I don't know in real life how I'd have to see it in person to really get a a good appreciation of what they how they truly look. All I can do is look at like the news and see like how is Yellowstone looking today. Uh, you may see this video a year from now, and basically Yellowstone Park in the USA is got some severe flooding at the moment. This washed out roads. In fact, the inspiration for making this video came from uh, one of the pictures I saw on the news. Except I have the river going through the road too. Uh, yeah, that's kind of like what I had to go on when I envisioned this. I actually took the texture here from uh, a screenshot in Watch Dogs 2. This particular texture, um, I took it like 16K resolution <laughs> and then downsampled it. It's got some aliasing in there for some reason. I haven't looked at it to figure out what was going on with that yet. Uh, so, this is just one way you can like add to your water. And of course you got the games fluid system that you can add to it to give it even more uh, realism. But it's not going to work great because of those humps. But I'll still put it down to... I love how they fix this by the way. It is quite easier to operate. Now it's hard to grab these little nodes. Now you can see when you combine the game's fluids with, and you got to know too, the bank's going to be covering all this up. One of the cool things about the river system is you got the ability to increase what's called dark, wet darkening. So basically the deeper something is, the darker it makes the underlying uh, water, or mesh in this case. And you can specify the depth that it begins. So if you want it to start dark darkening the colors farther away I mean darkening the mesh farther away you just and where's it at dip yeah you could do something like that hold on a second Uh -oh. One more second. You know I'm back when you hear that squeaky chair. I tried to WD-40 this thing and it didn't help. I believe the squeaks is in a place I can't get to. I'll add a node. I'll hit Alt and say insert node here. 
this can be a little tricky sometimes it doesn't want to like if you put nodes too close together or it won't let you put one if it's too close it'll try to connect from the other side or something Basically, this water, the water system, is what is the what's moving the uh, car if it gets in it. I can do another one here, go under there, but I'm not going to do that. Not not now. But that that's what the plan is. Now to kind of get these colors a little better. Let's see, is that above the water? No, it's not. See, that's what you kind of got to make sure. and Look at your different views. Make sure your water is where you want it, where it should be. And not like this. No, I say it's a little pain in the butt. Little, You can change the segment length to uh, be less. Basically, that'll allow more tessellation to give you more flexibility with the river at the expense of performance. Actually, the more tessellated it is, the more it'll let you put a node. Look, it twisted it all up. See, that's the thing, it's, it's a pain in the ass, the water, when you're trying to shape it. So you can only kind of get in the ballpark. You can't really quite get it exactly how you want it. Now, if you were like, uh, I haven't actually tried to do this to see how it would turn out, but if you edit the... Uh, Set some. If you uh, go to ripples and you turn all three of these, zero, one, two, which is th three, change the speed to zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. See how that kind of makes it look like a sheet of ice, the water running under it. Now, I did spend a lot of time on this, but that would be kind of like another thing you could do if you wanted to. And you can change this. There's so many things you can do with the river, it just takes a little patience, depending on what it is you're trying to achieve. And then you got the uh, distortion effects, where the distortion starts, how close or how far away, or how far away will you see the distortion effect. You know, just a little bit goes a long way. Maybe you want it to distort more the deeper it is, and that would be distortion full depth. That just gives it a little you know light distortion look whatever it's called I'm not sure 
sure what's going on with that weird looking reflection there. But we're not making ice, but I was just showing you like that's something you could do. I'm just gonna control Z. There we go. Uh, the darkening's too dark. Let me change the time of day again also. It can be kind of misleading looking at that. Yeah, see I done got this way too dark. I'd say working on something to do it in daylight. The best daylight you got. Or like what would be like high, high noon. There we go. Now I don't have a terrain block. Let me save this and add a terrain block real quick. It's gonna crash. Nope, it didn't. Ooh, thought it was gonna crash on me. It was taking a little too long. I had me worried. The terrain. Yeah, small grid doesn't come with a terrain block. You'd have to add it if you wanted a small grid, which I'm gonna start. I'm going to start making levels that are very small in size. So I'll probably be making most of my stuff in small grid and just making assets and adding them as I need them rather than have every damn asset from, you know, a whole gigabyte of stuff that I'm not even using, you know. Now, I've only got this one texture too, so I, I uh, haven't messed with this much. This is just to kind of give you an idea of what I mean about having the terrain work with you, with your river. If you ever want your height to all be uh, one height and not variable, because like if you just normally if you're just uh, messing with the flatten tool it'll do the average between the highest and the lowest point of that circle which is half basically is how that works but if you want them all to be a set set height say you like that height right there you would say set height terrain height picker and pick the height and until you change to something else, everything will be that height, more or less. I mean, that's if you wanted to do that. I gotta turn V-Sync on. I, I, it looks terrible here on my side performance wise because uh, I can't do 180 frames a second not on a 60 hertz display I was doing some benchmarking and I was like a video benchmark video and I turned that off so it would be show you like basically the real world numbers 
But what about your road, man? What would you do with your road? Oh, it's here. It's it's here. Just gotta fix these banks a little better, and we will recede downward the terrain to expose the road. No, I forgot where the damn thing is, to be honest with you. Yeah, that just kind of works. I think that worked pretty good. I think that water going under that road. I know when I, when I was a young boy, my papa used to drive me in the water. He tried to hold my head under water and told me it was good for me. I don't know why I reckon he did that. Yeah, my swing blade voice isn't good today. I usually can imitate that guy pretty good. Billy Bob Thornton. That movie was awesome. Swing Blade. <laughs> I remember they were like, couldn't figure out how to get a lawnmower to crank. Carl, maybe you can help us. We ain't been able to get this thing to crank. It ain't got no gas in it. Mm -mm. <laughs> it ain't got no gas. That's the problem. Uh, so you see how you get the terrain to kind of work with you and Look at this, frames per second, 20. So it is quite resource intensive uh, when you start messing with all this stuff. So I, I try not to use the game water as much as I can. And that don't look right up there, as you can see. You can lower the lod distance also, and that'll help your performance when you're dealing with uh, mesh rivers. But segment length, probably I shouldn't have messed with. Can put that back at 10. And, uh, oh yeah. Water fog density, zero. I think clarity is when you're underwater. I'm not 100% sure on that. Now, to make the water affect the car, it's got to have flow magnitude physics. And no, let me say, this is not the terrain that's going to look, I mean, it's not how this is going to look when I'm done. I didn't, I don't have any textures for this terrain block, except for this one texture. This is not what I would go with. And by the time you start adding in all the other stuff to your terrain, your, your you know, miscellaneous details, grasses and forest items and all that stuff, you know, then it starts to turn into something pretty cool. I gotta fix that sparkling texture. Also gotta fix this. I gotta re-export this. I didn't realize the whole object, which is the road, these little blocks, and the dirt, can only all have one collision type if they're joined together. And just to show you what I mean is I applied a custom ground model to it that I used on my snow track that I never finished. Um, 
See, that's a different ground model, which is supposed to imitate snow, where if you just lightly are on it, or if you fall farther into it, you'll go deeper into it. But that ground model doesn't work good for this road. But that was what the ground model for the river is supposed to be. I thought it would work with the mud too that's there, but I'm going to change this back. In fact, I'll probably just tell this road to be visible mesh final. Uh, make sure I pick the right thing. Always do visible mesh final for collisions. Don't ever use visible mesh. If you do, the game will tell you. Uh, performance mesh is using visible collision if this is not intentional please switch and it, if you keep reading I can't I don't know how to hell scroll over there please switch to visible mesh final so that's why you want to do that then rebuild your collisions now oops I won't do that let's save real quick I did forget one thing they took out in the material editor they took out a feature that used to be an advanced and additional info down here uh, material type I mean, ground model type, sorry. Ground model type. So if we go into that folder, uh, the ground models, Snow 2. Uh, these are just a couple in here. Shapes. Oh, art. Flood. Materials. Flood two needs a ground model. Oh, it does have it. I didn't realize that. It is. It does have it. Okay, my bad. It is in there. Now let's get this water functioning as it's supposed to function. So now it's not functioning because it doesn't have any flow magnitude physics. That would be, let's bring your car over here. Flow magnitude physics are what moves things. Yes, I know <laughs> that is not water. I was experimenting. some shitty performance there. You see that thing go da 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 <laughs> they like really lurched really bad the frame rate when it hit that the first time. I didn't do it this time though for some reason. Yeah there it did. You seen that? How it just like I didn't like that very much. Now that fire would be good for like your lava and stuff. Uh, let's go back to the to this. Let's change this back to its normal collision mesh, even though it's the wrong collision mesh. It should perform a lot better now. Because you definitely do not want a high polygon 
100,000 polygon model, which I think this is about 100,000 polys. Let me see. That's the collision model. Uh, maybe I did subdivide it. Oh, no, it is. 100,000, 114,000 polys for the high detail model. And the collision mesh is only using 5,000 polys. Opposed to telling the game to make visible mesh final, the collision mesh, which would be 114,000 polys. Uh, that's why I have a custom collision mesh on there, which is the same way that I showed you how I did the collision mesh for the river, I did for the road. So this should calculate and it should make the performance better. Let's try it again. Yeah, so that was a lot better, but it didn't react the way it was supposed to, but you know, it takes a little time. Now the reason I used the custom ground model for this river mesh is because I don't want it to behave like asphalt. If you have it behaving like asphalt, let me hide the river for a minute. If you have this behaving like asphalt, it's going to look funny. I didn't mean to do that, but that actually is pretty cool. I'm trying to pick my car up. The river's not high enough. There's not enough flow magnitude physics to usher it along. Oh, wait a minute. I hit the river. You can't do that. Not like that, anyway. Performance still got shitty right there. See, it's not really like going underwater or anything. Yeah, I gotta optimize this more, for sure. I said, let's use the collision mesh I made for it. Rebuild collision, dumbass. See, with the custom ground model, it allows it to go into the water some too. Like it's into the mesh. Somebody asked me about, does this thing collide with the car? No, but it could if it was made into a mod that you basically would have to make a hydro for this part and control it like a steering wheel for it to open and close. And then that would kind of work. Now, like you might say, well, you know, I don't really want to see the game's water. I like, I got, I got a slower system and all that extra shit making it run bad. Then what you do is down here. I think it's render, enable, uncheck, and the river will still function, but it won't draw it. I mean, not a hundred percent sure. To yeah, that's how you do it. So you just 
Now, if you just say hidden, I believe it will hide it, but then the, the, the flow magnitude physics won't work. So you have to hide it by just saying it's rendering enabled, yes or no. Just say no. Now what makes water really, what really sails a river is the sounds that it makes. Uh, and that's where you would add a, your own sounds. Let's see, uh, go back to, I don't think I have a water sound effect. I did, but then I lost the level I was working on. Yeah, I just have wind in these. I remember there's no water sound. So all I do is go to YouTube and just Google river sound and I just record a few segment seconds or so and or, or maybe like a half a minute and uh, export that audio as a Vorbis OGG file which is render audio is in Blender uh, if you're in your video editor for example and you got YouTube video that you dragged and dropped into here well, I'll just do it real quick well shit I can't I ain't got my game a system audio recording but you you drag the audio into there and then you would say render audio and then you basically change this to aug and vorbis and then what it then the file that you render you just stick it in your art folder in your level and then when you go to create a sound emitter you basically would change the file name to that file. I don't think I have any. There may be a river sound at one of these other other levels. I don't like getting assets from other maps. Uh, but just for the. I mean, I need to be no damn sounds. Even see any sounds. I'm not sure where they're stored at on the developer levels. I think all that stuff's in like a common folder that they pull, pull from that's in a zip form somewhere else on the hard drive like in the install folder <sighs> but basically sound emitters you have a reference distance and then you have a maximum distance that that sound will play reference distance is like where it's very loud or it's its maximum loudness basically uh, it's just like a linear curve or not a linear. It's like a linear from red to green, but then from green to the center, it's more of a sleep, steep slope. I guess is how to explain it. You can also tell it not to be 3D audio, and it'll just play everywhere on the map. And you can tell it whether or not you want to loop, it, loop the sound, or not loop the sound. I haven't ever fooled with streaming any of that. I have messed with the pitch a little bit, trying to modify some stuff, but uh, what is that? You know, my rainbow is uh, not a rainbow for some reason. I must have made this. I didn't save. I didn't save the damn texture.
we go. That's nowhere near the water, is it? It's also not even double sided. Oops. Yeah, it's probably easier if you try not to do the Just get it where you want it to be, where it's easier to see. Where exactly it is, and then make it into the alpha blend. be cooler if they had the option like Doom had where you could make a sprite always face or a billboard always face the camera. You can do that with the terrain ground model uh, where you add like a uh, what the hell is it? ground cover but that's for like grass and shit it wouldn't be feasible to really make the ground cover just for one rainbow I mean that, that wouldn't look that'd be kind of weird looking having a bunch of shit be a lot of performance too all of those alphas transparencies Let me see one last thing. Damn it, I forgot, I, I gotta fix this. Shit. Gotta reinstall.
Toad height relative. I don't know. That's new. Not sure what that does. Oh, that's no depth. Damn it. I hit, the, I hit the wrong shit. One. That's what we wanted. Copy those river properties to the clipboard. That way I can just quickly make just this little thingy here. And then paste river properties so that they have the same settings as the other one. Two different rivers. depending on where you are. I mean, that's really way too high uh, for that. And the height is off. It can be helpful too if you're editing a river and you're having a hard time seeing. You can increase the fog, for, you know, and just take it back off if you don't want it. I 
which I'm not seeing anything for some reason. Uh, it's because it's not rendering. <laughs> I'll usually turn the reflection off. It makes it a little easier to see. Then you know where your river is in relation to your mesh. It just makes it hard to see the damn nodes. That ain't quite right. But I don't know what this does. I don't know. I have no idea. Unless that's like sea level, <laughs> where that's like the where the starting location of it was before it started adding nodes. I don't know.
takes a lot of adjusting to get it just like you want it. Now since the collision mesh is like, like snow for the actual mesh that has the water animation texture, then you can sink into it a bit. So if your river plane is slightly inside of the water, that's fine because it's going to allow you to kind of fall into that mesh a little bit. See, I, I could make that deeper there. That's too kind of like two on the surface. Water also has. Um, you can also adjust the water density and that'll allow you to sink more in it. But I think it's around 600. Under 600, it won't even affect the car. Like, it won't move it because it's not enough. I forget how to explain it exactly. It's not enough density. I guess the weight of the car it's like even that would work or should work yeah. let's see how yeah. See, <laughs> it doesn't gradually, that's why I was like, well, you know, don't really make that much of a shit difference. It's either like on or off. That's probably more realistic. I think we got us a winner.
Yeah, you know, I could always, always just raise the mesh. If I wanted to cover up more of the road. Oh, no, I can't. Not with this mesh. I forgot. This is all joined together. That was part of the problem. You have to have a second flood. I see how that's all together. That's not what I mean. And that, that one's way too large. I'm trying to scale it down. This doesn't quite have a hump like it needs. That's what I was saying, like when you fold your ends down, you know, if you have them folded down more, it makes it easier to connect with stuff like for things like that. But this one ain't gonna work good. Since there's more water, well, you just have to adjust your river. Oh, we don't need all these nodes either.
Look at that, they ain't even damn on there. I think that's it for this one.